Welcome to the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show, a broadcast service of globalbusinessnews.net. This episode from the meeting room of Global TV Talk Show is brought to you by The Bridge School, the accredited international online private school of choice at bridgek12.org. Porch Light Rental and Destination Services. Reduce your renter lump sum or managed relocation costs. Visit them at porchlightrental.com. Cube Monk, featuring the world's first smart cube. Track your goods with our advanced GPS system. Welcome to the future of moving and relocation at cubemonk.com. Primestone Partners, featuring corporate, government, and developer housing solutions, as well as senior level advisory services. Find them at primestonepartners.com. And by airs.com. With our full range of services, we can help design and manage your international relocation. Find us at airs.com. Insured Nomads provides protection and peace of mind with health insurance, travel insurance, group, or tailored insurance for the globally mobile. Visit us at insurednomads.com. And by International Auto Source. We are the vehicle experts for expats, featuring all major brands of automobiles with flexible solutions and financing. On the web at intlauto.com. Hi, this is Ed Cohen, and I'm your broadcast host on Global TV Talk Show. This is a new service of globalbusinessnews.net. Go check it out. I think you'll like it. Very special program today is about rental housing. And we have what I'll call a genius in charge here, Diane Ayers, who's co-founder of Porchlight. And Diane, welcome. Please say hi and quickly introduce yourself. Hi, Ed. Thank you so much for that lovely compliment. And my genius is that I have two wonderful people that are joining me with all the brains. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's uh, say that Porchlight was founded a long time ago by, yeah. by, by, by yourself and, uh, and Janet and Janet and, and perhaps some others in the background there. But um, what specific role do you play today? Okay. Um, at Porchlight, way back when, when we founded the business, I have been president of the organization and helping to lead its client development, strategy, and growth plans. Okay, and let's go to Janet. Uh, you're a co-founder also, and I understand you're the chief architect of customer service. Is that correct? That's a great name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've been with Diane for a, a number of years. We joke is that we started when we were about 10 years old. <laughs> and um, yes, she is, does all of the customer focused things. Um, the, the client, and then I work on the operations inside and uh, developing excellent customer experiences. Great. Brooke Foley, uh, you're uh, a specialist in branding, right? So you bring clarity. So how are you bringing clarity to Diane? She's already got it. <laughs> and we found she does. Uh, sometimes as markets shift and businesses change and needs change, sometimes the customer's perspective or their their needs change with, with all of those different variables and factors. And so we will help clients go in and determine how their positioning is um, mapping to their current client needs. And if it needs to be adjusted, we do that from a user-centered point of view. So we do it from the perspective of what the client's needing and what makes sense for the business itself. So how do you um, use metrics? Well, the metrics are very clear. I mean, you're either increasing your sales or you're not. You're either getting an increase in the operational KPIs that you have that you're managing. So Janet mentioned a few of those. So we'll map against those to make sure that some of the things that we're researching and adjusting um, as a result of that research feed into those types of KPIs. Trust factors, Brooke. It's really important, isn't it? And I mean, not only today, clean and safe is really important in housing, but what about between customers? Uh, I mean, between client and everybody else? That's a really interesting uh, statement. 
So oftentimes we will start working with businesses that have worked with marketing firms or marketing companies that have spent a lot of time talking to the firm or the, the brand or the service of the product about what they do. Understanding what your clients need is one thing. So if Porchlight is my client, I can guide them on what a business like theirs should do. And I can understand what they like and what they want. But if I'm really going to serve them well, I'm going to help them understand what their clients need and want from them. And the ability for them to market based on what the client needs and wants, which sounds like a very obvious thing, um, isn't necessarily how marketing planning usually works. And even when people talk about it, they don't necessarily follow through on true, true activities that drive that. So when Diane and Janet go to sell someone based on their position and their promise, the outcome of them doing that with the right audience that's going to buy that for the right reasons means that they're going to positively serve what that client needed, which means that client is delivering on their position and promise for someone else. So when you're marketing your position and promise, the trust factor comes in that you are selling someone what they need for their trust factor with their clients. So for example, with Diane and Janet and within the porch light experience, they're selling RMCs on the fact that they are going to help support their success within KPIs, right? Because that's what their clients need. In reality, what they're really selling is the ability to successfully place a renter in an environment that they're going to be happy with. So they have two people that they're trying to serve. And so being able to do what they said they would, and then have those clients come back and confirm you did what you said you would do is where the trust factor comes in the next time they go to sell someone else and say, Hey, we deliver in these ways. You can go talk to some of our clients or you can see our case studies, or you can see the KPIs, right? They have the proof points, the undeniable proof points that they're going to do what they're going to do. So hopefully the person that they're selling to is buying into the fact that they trust that they're going to do what they said they would already. Janet, what, with this kind of language that you're hearing now, I know you've heard it before because there's a close relationship, but how do you feed information to Brooke so that she comes back with suggestions or what ifs? Well, um, that's interesting. We didn't feed her any information. We gave her um, our customers to reach out to and that was done by an email with their permission and the ones that wanted to participate, they interviewed them and they got a lot of this information. And as she just mentioned in the trust factor, we have two different customers. We have the actual transferee who we're working with and then we have that RMC. And so she actually over the course of the last year has interviewed both um, for their perspectives and where, you know, what their goals are. You know, a transferee probably wouldn't say they have KPIs, but they definitely have goals and what they're trying to accomplish when they're moving and looking for a rental that RMC for sure would describe it, that they have KPIs and what they're trying to accomplish. And so we need to take both of those and make sure that we're delivering on both of those items. So Diane, it's your job to find the properties that will fit what we've just heard. Uh, so it, it because that's what it's all about. That's the right. bottom line, right? Right. And our clients hire us to provide that consistency of service for their transferee. So you can imagine an organization that has 500 moves, you know, half of them are going, going to be renters. Statistically, we know that's true. So they have all of these renters that they're moving to various locations across the country. And our job is to not only find them that rental, but also provide that consistency of experience across all those transferees, regardless of where they're moving to. And then what we do is we stay with them until they have their rental. And so what makes us a bit unique in the marketplace, or very unique, quite honestly, is that our business is really outcome-based. The way we serve transferees is we're staying with them until they have a lease versus you have eight hours of service. I'm sorry, we didn't find anything, you know, service is up. It's, it's consistent, it's outcome-based, we're with them until they have their home and customers have a form of measurement on that because we have our renter analytics dashboard that gives them the metrics and all that they need 
to determine, are we doing the job well? How effective are we? And how happy are the transferees? And all that information, along with cost savings, is all found within our vendor analytics for them. So the analytics and the metrics make your company unique and have been for a long time, right? Right, right, exactly. All right, so, so you feed that information. Do you feed that information to Brooke or does she just find it? Oh, we, Brooke, we hired Brooke because we wanted to touch base with our marketplace every so often. And Brooke's company, the Jane Agency, specializes in research, branding, and strategy. So we went out to the market. I met her through a WBEN organization involvement. So woman power during this month of March, but we've had a great opportunity to get to meet each other in those organizational meetings. And I just loved what their company was about. And so what we did was give Brooke the information she needed, which was really contact information like Janet shared. So she was able to talk with, reach through surveys, hundreds of renters, talk with a number of renters, and then the same happened with our clients. And our clients gave us permission to come in and, and have that conversation on Zoom and phone and really get in touch with, you know, are we in line with how things are evolving? And we've been in business 18 years. So you want to touch base and make sure you're, you're continuing to evolve with your customers. And that's what they did for us. Brooke, I read that you uh, focus in on life stages, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this has to do with the renter, right? Every research track is going to have its own wonderful, beautiful reveals. In this instance, we did not go in knowing that we were going to find life stage based personas. We went in looking to say, okay, there seems to be trends and what people need. And let's understand a little bit better about who those people are. So we, we interviewed a range of individuals. And what we found was that the types of services they needed from Diane and from Janet and from the Porchlight team varied based on where they were at within their life stage, which we weren't expecting. It kind of was one of those things where as we were going through the research, it started revealing itself. And so by the time we got to a certain point in the interviews, we started testing the theories we were seeing. And we, we actually got the, the end users confirmation that that was how they wanted to be treated and the way that they understood or misunderstood their own needs. Yeah, Janet, so you're listening to this. I mean, you know all this already, but, but <laughs> would you add commentary to that and how that feeds back into your way of looking at things? And then what do you do with that? Well, absolutely. So one of, you know, one of the goals that we went to um, Brooke and Jane um, for was direction and communicating and engaging um, our, our customer, the renter. Um, and so what we learned through these lifestyles is certain things that they were looking for are word choices. So they weren't necessarily looking if they were gonna be looking online, you know, for some help with this, for rental assistance. They were looking for something like lifestyle matching or if you're a, a millennial, they are looking to make sure that they get area insights. They want to know that they are going to be able to walk to things and really immerse themselves into the area. And they're not necessarily looking for a rental. And this was really helpful information because that is helping us now position what we're doing and how we can help them. It's not just helping you find a you know, four wall structure that you can sleep in. It's helping you find your neighborhood, your lifestyle, where you're going to do life. So that's how her information really helped us. And Diane, how do you translate back? Well, I know you do because you keep winning all these awards. <laughs> so, <laughs> and recognition, for, recognition. Uh, for, for real good work. So how do, what's your favorite way of taking this info and translating it into um, customer retention? It's sharing with them the things that they need well, first of all, with the RMCs, for example, sharing with them what we're learning is so valuable to them. For us to be able to take the research and the year invested in this and be able to go back to our RMCs and say, look what we have here. We understand because they're having the same problems we are or the same need to make sure things are on track or how they need to tweak it. 
So the value we bring to them is that we can share with them from a renter perspective, these are the life stages they're in. This, these are the things they say they need. And what the, the main key was, which Brooke opened up with, was the trust factor. And RMCs struggle with the same things all of the suppliers struggle with, which is this, as soon as you get more removed from the employer, there, there's, the trust starts to disintegrate a little bit. So when the employer is with the, the employee that they've hired and are relocating, there's a lot of trust right there. And then the next thing they do, Ed, is they send them into the relocation process. And now the RMC becomes that main contact and then come all the rest of the suppliers. And so you know this from the industry, one of the number one complaints clients have is that there are too many people or so many people involved in the relocation process and the transferees had to keep all of that straight. And there isn't a terrific way to solve that because we all have our specialties and not one company can specialize in all the things that need done in a relocation. But what we all need to understand is that the trust has all is held with the employer the employer's name. So everything we can do to link ourselves back to that employer, even though we have to insert a new person in the process, a new supplier in the process, we have to link ourselves to the employer. And through my client reviews this first quarter, I had such aha moments with the RMC saying, oh, wow, because they're experiencing these things and not realizing that's part of the disconnect. They have to act as though they're the employer. I say that with quotes, they're not but they have to link themselves closely to build that trust factor throughout the process. Did well, I say that uh, right, Brooke? <laughs> you did great. <laughs>Something that's really neat is that the Bridge School partners with various organizations to provide learning for their students. For example, we partner with a major ballet company and we are able to enroll several of their students into our school. So now not only is the student able to participate in a school and have a seamless transition while they're very active in their ballet career, but now they have um, other dancers that are with them that are doing some of the same courses. So it's almost becoming a, a camaraderie where they're taking similar courses, they're working together on their ballet, and really being able to form this great partnership with these organizations to provide a needed service. A lot of times um, there are student athletes who will spend hours and hours at the gym or um, at the, the basketball courts, wherever it is. And if they're attending a traditional school, they're in school from eight to three. They get a quick snack and then they're at the gym for three to four hours in the evening. Coming to us and having that partnership, they're able to break that up throughout the day. They can have a morning practice, get some schooling in, have an afternoon practice, finish their schooling in the evening. So there's that flexibility. And additionally, if there are tournaments or performances, it's fantastic because if there's a week where they have shows straight through, they can take that week off of learning and then pick back up when they're done. So it offers this great flexibility. And for the program owners of these sports leagues, it is a win-win situation for them because they see this need. They see this need that their students need to make sure that they are obtaining the grades necessary to be successful adults in, in our country and in other countries. But it provides them an environment where they can be successful at both. So we've been talking about five-star customer experiences. And uh, let's just say uh, during the pandemic, uh, it's, uh, are there different five stars? <laughs> well, there were different services for certain <laughs> that we had to put in place. I mean, honestly, we've, we've done virtual services forever, but you can imagine how that increase, you know, the need to have that virtual on the ground assistance and that area expertise to really help somebody who's sitting in Des Moines, Iowa, move to Miami, Florida and never visit the market. So to be able to use those area insights, our local expertise on the market to really walk them through that process, record 
FaceTime, just be with them through that experience so that they could take a lease without visiting the market was, was super important. And we did it exceptionally well. We have story after story that we have put out even on social media in many cases to just really commend our local team of experts that do this every day and do it so well. So let's talk about the triple surveys uh, where you've done so well. Um, in about two minutes, tell us about what does it mean to you? Well, it, it means a few things. Number one, it's one of my favorite stories to tell because it, until I spoke with Alan Triple about what Porchlight does, he never even included the category within the triple survey. He, he, no one was requesting it. His relocation managers that take the survey never mentioned it, so he brought it to them. So what a value add to be able to go to your clients and say, would you like this category of rental finding assistance, destination services included? They said, yes, let's do it. And from that point forward, Porchlight has always topped the, the scoring in that category. So I think we're going on six years of consecutive top performance there. And then he started a transferee survey and we came out on top for that as well. So never before had they um, surveyed transferees about the rental experience compared to all the others that um, you know, are in our category. And so we came out on top and it was a really wonderful and prideful moment. Our team worked so hard and for those little kudos that come along the way is really important. Paul, let's show that graphic now. This is about rentals in 2021 and how the markets have changed. So Diane, why don't you tell us what this is? We're not gonna go into detail here sure. with the, all the pages. I do have them and we will publish it in our uh, PR magazine called Newsroom. Uh, but what's this show to you? What's this all mean to you? Our clients ask us for any information that they can be educated on as they are moving people around the country. In this case, it's US centric and it speaks to the, you know, somewhat of an exodus out of the urban areas. It's not a mass exodus, but as people could work elsewhere and keep their rents down or really um, live in larger spaces, more enjoyable spaces since they weren't going into the office. That's a lot of what this trend is talking about. So rents in San Francisco and Boston and New York that used to be so very high are still sort of high, but low relative to what they used to be. Certainly deals on the market and some, some exploration of that in this piece, but it also talks about what the hot markets will be, what to look for in 2021, and that the housing shortage is real across all markets. Whether you're buying or renting, if you want a single family home, you already know if you're buying, that's through the roof right now. You, it's a seller's market all the way. Well, it's a landlord's market too because the single family homes are not all that readily available, but that's what renters want. They, they want that larger space. They're moving with families. They move with pets. They want yards. So when people think renters, they often think apartments and it goes way deeper than that. It goes into the condos, townhomes, single family home dwellings. And, and we encompass all of that within this um, trend piece. But those are the high points really, that um, you know, rents are coming down in those high rent markets. People want single family homes and inventory is gonna be low. And it um, talks a bit about what, the, what some of the more popular markets will be. So the California companies are uh, having some trouble relocating people into California. Um, particularly the Silicon Valley in particular. Right. So uh, a lot of Silicon Valley, not all of it, is relocating down here in Southern California. Right. Google right. just tripled its space here in San Diego just this past week. Fantastic. All right. And um, because they can't relocate people up to the Bay Area, there's no place for them to go. Uh, yet, uh, uh, so although San Diego has experienced... Uh, a rapid price increase the past year. Uh, it's still lower than than uh, San Jose area, Palo Alto. Right. Right. So um, Silicon Beach, uh, which is uh, just south of uh, uh, Santa Monica and just north of LAX, uh, is Silicon Valley South. Uh, so uh, 
and the, that area is so concentrated right now, the prices are through the roof. Exactly. And so companies are moving east, mm -hmm. uh, not uh, to Palm Springs, but into Riverside, San Bernardino, mm -hmm. where is more mid-America pricing. Right. All right. And still be in Southern California, way different weather than the coast, but you can still uh, keep all your friends and contacts and lifestyles. Right. So Californians moving into Austin are bringing California pricing, not just they politics. Are. They are. So, mm -hmm. um, so the it's prices good. are going up in Nashville, right. in, in Bentonville, yep. <laughs> yeah. even Oklahoma City. Yeah. So how do you deal with that when uh, you're, you're negotiating? Well, I always tell people we don't create the market. We just share with you what's available in the market. And then any negotiating pointers that we can provide them, we certainly do. So if they, first of all, being relocated is kind of something to sell. Um, transferees or applicants, uh, you know, if you own rentals, it, it's kind of intriguing to you and interesting that you're dealing with somebody who's relocating because you know their company wouldn't be investing in them to make that move if they weren't kind of a worthwhile tenant. They just like, as they just seem more elevated in who they are when they know that a company is relocating them, that they're making that investment to do that. So we always make sure that that is part of the dialogue and how we can then go from there. You know, we'll ask for what we need to. We have great quality local area experts who do this on a regular basis, who know what they can ask for, what they can't ask for, and just being in touch with the market helps you keep landlords engaged. So you don't, you know, tick somebody off and they go to the next applicant because there are, there will be the next applicant Good. if they Thank aren't you. already there. <laughs> Thank you. Brooke, I know you got to take off. So all of this relates to the branding. And so branding means new things now post COVID, right? Not really. We have found oh. that it's the same tenants that were there before. It's a matter of customer service when it comes to the rental assistance business. And what we found when we did the research, both with both with the renters, the transferees and the RMCs was that the consistent expectation for Porchlight was extremely high and that they delivered far and above their competitors. And we just saw that over and over and it was actually unprompted. It wasn't necessarily the research that we were doing. It was shared voluntarily without us prompting that. And so when we went back and ass uh, um, assessed the brand for Portslight itself, we actually went back in and added something to their brand platform, which was excellent customer service that was proven out by testimonials for the research. So, you know, prior to COVID, it was, it was you making good on your promise. And after COVID and during COVID, it's making good on your promise, if not even more so. So the only thing I would say that's changed about brand is the urgency around it being very clear. As for Porchlight, theirs is really, really clear. And they have consistently delivered on it. We challenge people. So Janet, that falls to you, doesn't it? I guess it does. Do you want to clarify? So I. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just uh, now, but you're, I, I don't want to really use this word, but I can't think of any better word right now, but you, you're the executioner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> really, I'm not. <laughs> I have to perform. execute that, though. Oh. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so we have to, we, we do put in place um, measures for customer service. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah. Or okay. anything. Take me out of this. <laughs> <laughs> this might help. Maybe this will help. This is an interesting thing to be observed. And when Janet or when Diane was saying earlier that they've had virtual services all along, the interesting thing was that in the research, what came out was a constant um, Diane this, Diane this, Diane this, when in reality, a lot, which was great, but a lot of the things that they talked about and referenced in terms of what was working for the rentees was the operations and the way that the Janet was overseeing and implementing the way that was executed. And so it was the combination where, you know, sometimes you say the best operations are the ones that aren't seen. 
right? Usually if there's a problem in operations, that's when you start talking about it. When it's going right, no one's talking about it. And so what we saw was that the, the, the behind the scenes implementation that was happening direct with the renters was somewhat invisible to the RMCs, but the RMCs satisfaction with how the renters were being served and the solutions that Janet and Diane brought forward through Diane were really delivering well. And so it was the combination that was just constantly just hitting it out of the park for their clients. Well, thank you, Brooke, for staying with us and for this uh, marketing and PR insight. Uh, uh, That's my language and I get it. And our audience, I think, will be able to apply what you've been saying. Diane, thanks very much for being on this program with Thanks for having me. And uh, come back. Let's do a a next chapter. Let's do it. And go a little deeper. All right. Thank you, Brooke. Nice to meet you. Janet, great to see you. You Uh, And Diane, it's always a pleasure. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for being on Global TV. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining us in the meeting room at Global TV Talk Show. Have a wonderful day and stay safe.